My name is Hannah Stewart and my independent science research project was an analysis of behavior patterns of two-toed sloths at mineral licks sites in the Peruvian Amazon. This study is an offshoot of a study that is being conducted by Dr. Brian Griffiths of George Mason University using data that from, collected from photos that he took between August of 2018 and November of, or March of 2019, um, camera trap photos that he took in the Peruvian Amazon at Mineral Lake sites. Um, these sites are very important because he found that there was a large number of photos of sloths at these sites, which was very unusual because sloths generally stay up in the canopy and they only come down to go to the bathroom and go to mineral licks. And so it's super unusual and rare to have photos of sloths. And it was a great opportunity to explore the ecology of sloths and what these sites mean for sloths. Uh, so I decided to focus on behavior patterns. So the purpose of my study was to analyze the behavior and classify the behavior of sloths at mineral licks. And I hypothesized that there would be increased levels of vigilant behavior seen in sloths at the mineral licks. Um, this is because the mineral licks are sites that um, are naturally occurring in the rainforest that contain water, mud, and minerals. And lots of mammals, um, prey mammals, come to these sites in order to get extra nutrients um, and help with their digestion. So they're sites that are super active in uh, the ecology of the Amazon. They're really important to local human populations, all local animal populations. And they're really important sites that are predation risk sites, uh, meaning that the mammals that are going there are at higher risk for being attacked by a predator. Um, so this is why I wanted to focus on vigilance, because I wanted to see whether or not sloths that are at the lick are understanding that they are in a risky situation. Um, so the method for classifying behavior was looking at sets of photos um, and the photos, there was tens of thousands of photos and um, groups around America um, from different American high schools were helping to classify the photos that Dr. Griffiths collected and we were looking for several things. So first we were looking if there was a sloth. If there wasn't, we discarded the photo and then if there was a sloth, we entered a few things into a data sheet. We entered the number of sloths, whether or not it was a baby or an adult, and then the number of those two things. And then we entered their behavior in a code of one, two, or three. So if you look at figure one, which is the three photos along the top, um, behavior one would be if the sloth was eating, so its head is down in the lick, and that's photo C. Behavior two is if the sloth is traveling, coming, or going from the lick, and that's photo B. And then behavior Three was if the sloth was displaying vigilance, so looking around, um, stand, staying still with its head up, and that's photo A. And I understand that these photos are kind of low quality, um, so I apologize for that. Um, and once all of the photos were entered, uh, I helped collate the data, and then Dr. Griffiths and a graduate student filled in some gaps in the timeline. And then that was the final set of data that he is now using for his project and I also used to move forward in my results. Uh, there was a total of 1,168 photos that had sloths um, from a set of over 10,000 photos. And we found, or I found that, as you see in figure two, which is a um, bar graph of all of the instances per month, I found that there was a peak in instances of sloth visits in December, and that's also when we found the most, I found the most instances of vigilance. So out of the 1,168 photos, 79 were photos of sloths displaying vigilance, and 22% of those 79 were in December. Um, so I also wanted to look at the number of babies per month, and I found that 
there was also a peak in the number of babies per month in December. 56% um, of the babies that were seen were seen in December. Um, and then finally, I made an activity graph, which you see is figure four. And that is basically an, a graph of the behaviors seen and the number of visits seen per hour um, throughout all of the photos. And so as you can see, there was a peak between hours 21 and 23 in the day. So that's kind of the middle of the night. Um, and each line is one behavior. Um, so what this means for me is that unfortunately, because there were so few instances of vigilance, my hypothesis was not proven. However, the patterns that we I did find in my results are super helpful moving forward. Um, some ways to explain the patterns that we found are that there was a peak in visits when there was also a peak in babies. So one thing that I discovered was that much of many of the minerals that are needed for um, proper lactation in mammals are found in the mineral licks. So one explanation for that peak of visits to the mineral lick when there are babies is that the mother is trying to increase um, the, her amount of minerals because they're depleted through lactation. And so minerals like phosphorus and calcium are found in the lick. Um, also, as you can see in figure two, the high instances of vigilance and traveling in December replaced high instances of eating at the lick. So we were, I was seeing more instances of sloths traveling and looking around and less of them eating um, when there was a peak in babies, um, which I found could be linked to the fact that mothers are more vigilant when they have offspring. They're more aware of the danger that they're in. And so they might be going to the lick more, but for less amount of time. Um, so some things that need to be done is that we need to look further into the duration of time that the sloth is at the lick per visit. We also need to look further into the mating patterns and birthing patterns and gestation periods of sloths. Um, this is very um, exciting findings, but unfortunately, because there's such li little information on sloths out there in the scientific world, it's very difficult to understand exactly why these might be. However, they're a really great, these patterns are a really great starting point for what needs to be studied moving forward. Also, um, this helps to prove the importance of mineral licks as areas for scientific research and exploration and also as areas that need to be conserved in order to upkeep the health of the Amazon and the mammals that live there and even the human populations that live in the Amazon. Um, so it's definitely necessary to understand these things in order to get a more holistic grasp of the ecology of sloths, the ecology of the Amazon, and the importance of mineral licks. Thank you for listening.